Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Lori Fetter is our guest tonight. Lori is uh, Miss May. She's, uh, that would be in Playboy, of course. And uh, this is my month, actually. Because? Well, my birthday's in May. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of, uh, you may not know this, Lori, because you're not, uh, you weren't ever an adolescent teen male, but... Uh, guys get in a little competition, like especially when the Playboy calendar will come out. Right. Who's hotter? I see. You pick your month. And then you get into fight wrestling matches over it, fighting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like y y because if your birthday was in November, you'd have to make a strong case of why Miss November was hotter than Miss June if your buddy was yeah. had his birthday in June. That's how guys are. Yeah. That's why we run things. <laughs> What's up there, Lori? So you uh, won the match this year, right? Well, you just it's just serendipity, really. It's uh, <laughs> you're here, and it's uh, its my birthday. Drew, when is your birthday? September. September. I, I, I want to look at it. It, it. And Lori's very attractive, but I feel weird. You, what do you think? Can I look through this with you, you can sitting go here? You ahead. I'm used Doesn't to it. Doesn't bother you? Doesn't bother you? When I first saw it, it totally freaked me out. You missed a page. I think you missed oh. about two. Well, <laughs> now I'm going to get upset. Together. It's stuck together. <laughs> Static electricity and semen being what it is today, it uh, stuck the page together. Well, I'll get into this. Uh, All right. I'll get into this uh, later. So, uh, Playboy uh, pursued you for a year. I'm looking uh, here yeah. before uh, you finally uh, succumbed to their pressure. The whole thing How'd that work? Freaked me out at first. So. Reposing nude. Yeah. It was not really my thing at Why, all. Why you uptight, baby? <laughs> I'm a little bit just. That's what my buddy Daniel says to the chicks and always <laughs> loosens them up. No, I'm not uptight. Good. Take your top off. I bet that works like a charm. Not really. It's uh, more, more the producer thing that works for him. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it, was, it wasn't really something I ever thought of doing or really wanted to. And uh, then I, they pursued me, and I was kind of just talked into it. And in the end, I thought it was pretty fun, and it was great. Yeah, and... Uh, what is it? Uh, well, it's just come. It's just out, right? Yeah. I was going to ask how many doors it uh, opened for you, but it just <laughs> came out, right? But what's what's the plan? Uh, commercials, acting. That, you know, I've going with I've that been stuff? modeling and doing commercials for about ten years now, so this was just another thing that I did, and hopefully. Any stuff we would have seen you in commercials or? Um, Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, Robinson's May. Yeah. A few different things here and there. True, you've seen the Nintendo spots. I'm sure. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this is uh, it is uh, out on newsstands. Playboy always comes out like three weeks uh, before whatever month it comes on. What 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 what? When did this hit the newsstands? Oh gosh, maybe right into April. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. True. I've uh, no other magazine does that. I thought they were like three months ahead. I thought they no, were, No, a lot too. of mag well, magazines come a month, a this month is, ahead. Lori's 2005. Oh, got it. Got yeah. it. It's May 2005. It's two <laughs> years from now. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, go to uh, Monica, who's uh, 17, and uh, speak to her. Monica? Hello? Hi. There we are. <laughs> go right ahead. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just always seem to be coming all the time for some reason, like no reason at all, you know? You're and having an orgasm for no reason at all? Well, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's hard to explain. It's like, oh, be at home, I'll just be doing my thing, and... How? I'll Ooh. just, I don't know, I'll be working, doing True. my own thing. True. True's pager's going off. All right, so you, <laughs> all right, what about when you're with a guy? When I'm with a guy, it, it, like, it's like even more so. It, <laughs> I right. tend to react like really strongly. Well, right, that's good, right? Are you yeah. uh, are you on medication? Um, no. Look at this thing I just happened to have brought in. This is kind of as a interesting well, I, I'm persistent just sexual arousal syndrome in women. Isn't that wild? Yeah. And it's just an article. Never met one of them. Yeah, and it, these women complain about it. That's very unpleasant for them. Lori, where were you at, Lori? 
and you are persistently sexually aroused? <laughs> I'm actually not. It sounds like a great problem to have, though. Yeah, I know, but maybe it's the equivalent of a guy who can't get rid of his boner. Uh, yeah. Kind of, kind of, except they, they do experience orgasm. You both made the same sort of uh, grunt simultaneously. <laughs> uh, you both are like, oh. What was your uh for, Lori? <laughs> I think that's a little bit worse, but... You got a little Olsen twin in you. Anyone ever tell you that? No, never. Yeah? Yeah, it's a good thing. Okay. You could be uh, the third Olsen twin. <laughs> True. Can you be a third Olsen twin? Yeah, sure. All right. What should Monica do? Well... Blah, blah, blah. What are you doing? I'm over looking there? to see if there's any treatment recommendations. All ah, right. Prevalence is unknown. Many women are too embarrassed to report the complaint. Well, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm always, I'm like wondering if it might have something to do. It like it happened before this happened. I had an ovarian cyst rupture on me like two months back. Interesting. I blew one uh, about 18 months ago, didn't I, Drew? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so, so could that have done it? I don't see how. And they didn't put you on any medication? No birth control pills or anything? No, they wanted to, but they didn't. Yeah, I, I, it, I mean, it was against my mom. She didn't want me going on birth control. Well, no, here's what this little article says. It was just a little, little article I came across because I thought it was such an un unusual thing. And it says tells physicians just to be take it seriously uh, and uh, sort of acknowledge that it must be uncomfortable, but there really isn't a lot of good treatment. Oh, true. Sense. That's... That's breaking news. Yeah, but I mean, that's the point. Is that it's okay? You're you're going to have this thing. It'll probably settle down. Yeah. And. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, should she talk to her doctor about it? Yeah, that's the point. She should. She Maybe should. you should put a little uh, ambisol on her cooch. You know <laughs> Don't what I mean? Tell her that. You should, she should probably just talk to the doctor. Maybe one of those tux medicated pads. Something that, <laughs> something to numb it up a little bit. So it doesn't rub down there. Okay. I'm, I'm Drew, just reading Drew, this. Put, I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. We're going put right. away all your junk, would you please? Uh, You're all over the place tonight. Uh, uh, uh. All, right. all right. Peace. Your name is Peace? Mm -hmm. It is? Yeah. That's what it says on your birth certificate? Yeah, my parents named me it. Yeah, you should sue them. They're a creepy, sir. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> What's the problem there, Peace? Well, um, I had a threesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm. And I don't know who the guy is. Mm. Neither of the guys? Excuse me? I mean, you don't know which of the guys did this? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, and Peace. I don't even really know. Lori, uh, Lori's nickname, by the way, is Peace. For real? Mm-hmm. That's short for piece of ass. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Are you high? No, I don't do drugs. You don't? No, I thought that was funny. Well, really? Yeah. Didn't get much out of Drew, but you know. Yeah, well, you got you two to get along. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's a lot of bad blood between me and Drew. Why are you uh, doing this with your, you know, why are you acting out like this so much? Oh. You're having three uh, sons, you're 16. Well, the, the guy, I wasn't dating him, but he was in my class, and I thought his friend was really hot, and he was saying how he and his friend always dreamed of Yeah, him. I know. I'm not saying how did it happen. I'm saying what is it that's yeah. making you behave like this right now? But th these two guys weren't simultaneously, were they? She had a threesome. Or was it a threesome? The same, they didn't go inside me. Oh, not the same time, but same same night. Yeah, it's the same bed. Okay, it's the same bed. I understand. You needed that explanation? Yeah, yeah. As long as it's the same bed. <laughs> All right, what is it, Quaalude night? It is Quaalude night, Look, yeah. just go get a DNA test or go get an well, abortion or get two abortions. Yeah, either you can, you, you need to go talk to somebody who can help you make a decision about what you want to do with this pregnancy. If, if it's such a distressing situation that you don't want to give this up for adoption, you don't want to see this through, there, there are options for you. I mean, maybe, maybe give Planned Parenthood a call. And if you do see the pregnancy through, then at the arrival of the baby, you can get a paternity test done, paternity blood test. And I'm <laughs> sure these, what? <laughs> I'm just reading Lori's uh, bio over here. But keep going. <laughs> uh, it it says uh, well, it's really whoever wrote the bio is funny, but then uh, whoever wrote my cheat sheet's funny too because it says that uh, it says that uh, Lori uh, she moved to Los Angeles just uh, six months ago and is polishing her craft with. Uh, uh, Leslie Kahn I was acting <laughs> right while strengthening her mind at UCLA so then I get my uh, cheat sheets here and it says it says uh, she currently attends UCLA to strengthen her mind <laughs> <laughs> didn't 
you know UCLA gives this course on sit-ups for the brain? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of mind strengthening, where is uh, junior, 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 junior producer Lauren Coachella? Probably uh, getting into her fourth tab of acid right now oh, in terms geez. of mind strength. But <laughs> she's going to UCLA to strengthen her mind. It's your people's fault for putting this here in the first place. But Easy. There's no way that should have ever been copied, right? <laughs> and I like the twist, too, because we... we you had the uh, UCLA. You had the strength of your mind at the end, and we put it uh, before. The <laughs> True. Yeah, read, read that sentence. It's really funny. All right, how is the mind going? Oh, Seems the mind good. is feeling good. Yeah, you seem pretty strong, especially for a playmate. <laughs> You're doing good, right? Oh, easy. Well, I mean, come on. <laughs> let's face it. These these people don't. You know that that's not their stock and trade. Their brain. Not it's their boobs. You Actually, know? Miss January was a lawyer. Really. So. Wait, yeah, she's in her 40s now, right? No? That she was a lawyer when, a, as a playmate? And she was a lawyer before, and then she became a playmate. Wow. Well, you yeah. didn't hear about that much. Drew, are you reading that? Mm. Danielle? Yeah. What's up? You're uh, 16? Yeah. All right. Drew, you read the translation there? Yes, it's very funny. <laughs> What's wrong with Lauren? Danielle? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I, my situation probably sounds really stupid. But um, for the last two months, I've been hanging out with this guy. He's 21, and we became, like, best friends. I could tell him anything. He could tell me anything. What, where'd you meet him? Uh, my hometown now. He's, like, a neighbor or something? No, he's friends with one of my other friend's brothers. How long did you hang out with him for? I've been hanging out with him for, like, pretty much the past two months. Two months. Hmm. What do you do when you hang out with him? Uh, talk and... Just recently, he kissed me or whatever, like yeah. the last week sometime, and well, he also told me that he loved me. All right. Well, what's the problem? I have no idea how I feel about him. I kissed him back, and I don't know if I feel something for him or if not. And last night, he stayed the night. Lori, would you Oh, what happened? Nothing. Lori, would you say that's probably doesn't feel anything? The fact that she doesn't know how she feels? Yeah, I mean, if you don't know what you feel, I would just kind of stick with that. I wouldn't tell him something that he wants to hear. Yeah, I no haven't said anything to him back. Nor do anything that he wants to do just because. No, yeah. I mean, you should stick with your gut on that one and just yeah. play this through as uh, we're friends and we yeah. like to hang out. Do you even Did have I a gut when you're 16? Stop hanging out with him as much? <laughs> yeah, wait, I'm looking at the screen. It says he's 21? Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. it's over, baby. He's too old for you. Yeah, I mean, this could be going somewhere that you don't want to go at this age. He's a creepy guy. Yeah. He is. He may, may be a decent friend and have same, seemed as such and maybe even cares about <laughs> Who the about hell even wants to be? When you're 21 as a male, you want to be friends with a six-year-old girl that you don't want to boink? No. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I don't it's... trust this man. Yeah. I don't trust him either way. Well, there's a lot of sexual tension. I can feel that. Yeah, well. Yeah, I would get away yeah. from that. That's his so erection trying to break out of his jeans. Yeah. Oh, God. It, it, hey, look, aren't there guys uh, who are 17, 18 who are interested in you? I just moved to this town about three or four months ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. You should make some friends at school and... Mm, Stick with that. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about these playmates. <laughs> I think I often think about them. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of them... I, I don't know, she just reminded me when she said, I just moved to town. No. Half these totally hot chicks have these uh, loser... Sploozer, part spaz, part loser, like the guys who hang out out front probably keying my car right now trying to get uh, autographs from Lori. <laughs> anyone who uh, does does Playboy, anyone in any magazine, those guys, especially beautiful women, they hang out and they want to get the autograph on the thing. But I was like, <clears throat> if you've ever seen, uh, ever see Star 80? No. What is that? Don't know what Star 80 no. is? I don't know what it is. Wow. Drew, how do you not know anything? What is it? Nah, nah, I'm done with you. I'm just going to tell Lori what it is. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's the uh, the story of the playmate who was who was killed by oh, a crazy Dorothy, uh, Dorothy Stratton. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Yeah, I thought they would give you a whole Star 80 speech when he got into Playboy. Didn't tell anything about boyfriend snuffing you or anything like what that. Star 80, like it was it the movie they made about that? I mean, what's like the real story? Uh, if you said Dorothy Stratton. I would have known what you're talking. All about. All right. Well, I've seen the Each Hollywood story. The it's the story's about how it was. I mean, mm -hmm. she had this boyfriend who was this uh, controlling idiot, and he basically ended up killing her. But here's what I'm saying: a lot of these chicks have these goofball boyfriends at first when they're like 16 or 17 until they realize they're hot. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. 
They they all they all have this they all have this Anna Nicole Smith had this goofy boyfriend. They all have these goofy even like Britney Spears and stuff have these goofy hometown boyfriends. Well what are you gonna do? You're sixteen, you're seventeen, you haven't quite blossomed yet, and you're living in some crapville town working at a chicken place, you know? Right. Anyway, you gotta watch out for these guys, that's what I'm saying. Do you have one of those guys, Lori? Did you did from you? when I was sixteen and seventeen did I have one of those yeah. guys? When you're 16 and 17, yes. you don't really think of them as like some... That's a yes. <laughs> you don't think of them that That's way. That's a yes. That's <gasps> a yes. John, now you only date producers, right? What? Yes. That's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> John? All right. Go wait, wait. John? Oh, I know. Why do we have to... It, it's Quaalude night. I know, but why do we have to wait so you can say John? Because you don't say it forcefully enough. John? John, wait, wait, <laughs> John. Drew thinks he can put his kid glove over his tongue and do it somehow. Chris, yeah, what's up? Um, all right, I've been with my girlfriend for like six years, mm -hmm. and um, our sex life was really good in the beginning. Throughout the course of the relationship, though, it started to taper off. Yeah, and then we split up like last year for like three months. And then when we got back together, the intimacy level never was quite what it was yeah. before we broke up. What do you think, Lori? Um, I think that this is your typical, I'm in a relationship and I'm getting comfortable, so the sex life is going to go downhill. Yeah, yeah, but to the point where it was just like once or twice a month now? Well, if it's once or twice a month, maybe you guys have to rethink why you're together. Well, I mean, this is why she's with him. Or yeah, why she's with you, her. I mean... This could be she really cares about you and she likes you and this is great, but um, you know maybe she just likes you as a friend now. We're kind of she past loves you, Chris. Mm. She's just not in mm. love with you. Yeah, I think mm. we might have fallen out there. Because what? I mean, I mean, I just asked her. I mean, just be honest. You know, I'd be happy for her because I just wanted to. If she's not going to be happy with me, I want her to be happy with someone else. No, but. don't lay that on her. That, that now you just <laughs> now you just now you just locking the door. Yeah, is what girls, you're doing. girls don't go for that. That's a that's a guilt trip of all time. Yeah. Just as like just listen, you need the facts so you can make some decisions. That's all. You know, her happiness or or not be damned. You need to know what the reality hey, is. Chris is getting the idea that she's fallen out of love with him. Yeah, yeah. but he gives her that. I know. You know, it's pathetic. <laughs> I want you to be happy. Well, listen, it, it's noble, but it's retarded at the same time. It's, it's uh, no tarded, no barded, but tarded. <laughs> what? <laughs> like noble are you, and, are you and retarded. Tonight? Tonight? Really I'm really trying to keep a goddamn <laughs> show going during Quailu night. It Drew, is Quailu night. Drew, you spent the first ten minutes thumbing through your, your pages of these uh, magazines of jamming that, that, that you threw you off. Out. That threw you off. I'm Just sorry. Really, come on. Do I brought a another article show. for Get you, Get going. Let's go. Let's go. I was worried about the page. I got to answer. Chris. Yes. Okay. If uh, you stay with her, you try to hump her. If she wants to break up with you, let her do it. You don't have to open that door. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Bah. I think he needs to at least find out what's going on there. And if she wants, don't give her that so long as you're happy stuff. Just like, what are we, what are we doing here? Is this is something changed? And if so, what? And can we deal with it or not? What do you want to do? Let's move on. Yeah, okay. lay it all out on the table. Here's, here's a, like an interesting aspect about this relationship. Uh -oh. Um. Okay, I was... This is going to be fascinating, I'm sure. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right. I, I, like I said, I just want an honest opinion here. So. All right. Drew, shut um, up, would you? Go you right. just told me to speak up. I, I don't, I don't get sassy right. when the guy's going to give us a decent uh, story, for Christ's sake. Do go your ahead. job. Go ahead. All right. All right. Um, like, uh, I've been with um, more than one person in my life, and... Uh, this is, she was kind of like the first relationship I've ever been. I mean, she's ever, I was the first guy she was ever with. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, does that pretty much say it's a done deal then? She, no. 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 Not at all. No, that's probably why it lasted a few months longer than it should have. <laughs> How old is she? Uh, she? Right now, she's, uh. Right now. Right now. <laughs> all right, I'm done with She's going to be older in an hour? Like, I can't take, I can't take the right now. Uh, right now. What kind of <laughs> retard says right now when he asks how old? Now, how old was she when she was born? Idiots. Now, how old is she five years from now? <laughs> let's go into the let's go into the, the distant future. Uh, how old is she? She's dead. It's it's the year three thousand eighteen. How old is she? No, she's dead. Oh, I can't take the people to call this show. Here's the thing. 
when you lose your virginity as a girl to a guy, you want to string that relationship on. You want to work that for everything. Guys do that too. Guys do that too. Mm, Well, guys don't know how to end it. That's for sure. Guys don't want to do it for emotional reasons. Guys want to do it for physical (laughs) reasons. Right. A girl will lose her virginity to a guy, sort of stop sleeping with the guy, but not. Not wanting to not admit. Not admit. Yeah, not right. admit that it didn't work. Because mm-hmm. right. there was a connection there. It was supposed, there. well, also was the like fantasy was, su- yeah. the fantasy was it was supposed to work forever. Right. And, the the and, fantasy was is if when I give my virginity up to a guy, especially if I hang on to it for a while, this is the guy I'm going to be with. Right. So that guy will get a few extra months or years even out of the relationship. And I think that's what uh, young Chris has got. But let me ask you guys a hypothetical question. Have you ever been in a relationship, I don't even know if this is hypothetical, but have you ever been in a relationship where you thought something was up, you thought there was trouble, you thought the end was near, and the end wasn't near? No. Me, me neither. <laughs> it usually hit a little faster, actually, than I thought. Lori, you ever had that, you ever had that happen? Yeah, you think the end is near, and then it goes on for a while longer. Yeah, you, you're ready to pull the plug, and you don't, you, you, the guy gets to stay of execution, but I'm talking about... You getting dumped, or have you ever been dumped? Do you know that pain? No, you don't. Of course not. How could you? You're strengthening your mind at UCLA. She no, currently attends UCLA to straight strengthen her mind. All right, let's regroup. Drew, you get you get you get, you get <laughs> dumped. You know it's coming. You know it's coming, right? An expert. You can feel it. Yeah. Oh, but you but you then you start dancing. You start dancing, yeah. but it's always over. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll take ourselves a little break. Lori Fetter's our guest tonight. She is uh, Miss May. And currently in Playboy, out on uh, newsstands as we speak. We'll be right back after that. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Lori Fetter's our guest tonight. Lori is uh, Miss May. She's uh, in Playboy, and she's... uh, in the got the big fold out and uh, it's right in new stance as we speak. Drew, just brought a couple articles for you. Like well, enjoy oh. this. One is on uh, nocturnal enuresis. What's that? Peeping at night. Mm, I haven't like that. done that in a little while. I know, but here's the, here's what I, I brought this in. Not just to help you, but to mm. vindicate you. I had some serious night sweats last night, though. That's from the stuff that Bruce injected in your head. Really? Yep. No. Yep. Drew, you think you know. You don't know anything. Okay, here is the number one treatment for the bedwetting. Mm-hmm. You ready? Mm-hmm. Selected bedwetting alarms. Really? So yeah. E- either you wake up regularly and pee, like you suggested, or you have an alarm that goes off when you start to pee. Yeah. Thank you. Total vindication. Total vindication. Thank you, Drew. God bless you. Yeah. You're this is something he's been advocating for years, Laurie, for years. Well, for, for all those that suffer like he did with bedwetting. I know you're pretty turned on by me, Laurie, <laughs> but I'm going to bring it down just a little bit now. I used to wet the bed, you know, when I was a, a youth. And uh, nobody could figure... I, my mom thought, uh, well, this... Oh, my mom's such a retard. Thank God no one in my family listened to this crampy show. But she thought this must... This was rebellious. Like, it you is. Know, yeah, it is. They, well, you're 11, you're passed out, you you take a leak. Well, it's I rebellious t- for the fact that she didn't do any parent. I'm, are you oh, sure, yeah. sure she's not listening? Are you sure she's not listening? She's never show? been up past the, the street lights come on, she passes your grandma, out. Your grandma's like, you're pissed off? Yeah, she don't like my mom. Go ahead. Right. She won't tell anything. You're rebellious for her not having done any parenting. Sort of a sort of expression of, of uh, anger. Listen, sir, they, they, they figured out that people wet the bed for various yes, reasons. But right. usually it's just one of those, some people wet the bed a little later than others. Yes. My uh, grandfather, the only Jew in the family, step-grandfather. Don't, yeah, don't but, ask how that happened. But, but the only one who gave a rat's ass, he did some simple Jewish math. The Jews are brilliant this way. He said, look, if the kid's uh, going to bed at 9 o'clock at night and he's taking a leak at uh, 1 a.m., 1230 in his bed, when I'm done watching Johnny Carson, I'll just tap him on the shoulder, get him off the sofa, tell him to take a leak into his bucket, I'll put him back at the bed, and he won't wet the bed. Well, sure enough, it was right. And ever since then, I've realized this is a cure. Now, they have, they have drugs you can take. They have yep. these. And uh, I've argued with you about this over the years. I've said the drugs were the way to go. Yeah, they have, they have, they have, they have alarm. They have these uh, blankets that give you a little mild, mild shock yeah. or get an alarm and all this yeah. kind of stuff. I said, look, everybody, listen. If you're going to bed at 9 o'clock, take one of those little digital egg timers, a little, little digital kitchen climbers. Which, interestingly, you've started to, Set it begun for four to use hours. in many areas of your life now. 
I use it all over the yeah, place. But right. set it for. Well, I don't. I don't wet the bed now so much. Well, you got over. I'm, I'm more okay. crap myself. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just because I'm just. I'm too lazy that's to get ankle, off the sofa. Ankle priest. The point uh, yeah. is, is you set the thing for three hours. It goes off. You get up. You take a leak. You go back to bed. How are you going to wet your bed if you got nothing in the tank? Yeah. What, why? Why is this such a big? Uh, why why did my grandfather have to figure this right. one out? Ankle priest is eating poor. I take it back. But listen, okay. uh, they they say in this little article that the people that were ha having going through that training though was a very stressful experience for them. Even those first few weeks where they got it under control, was it problematic for you? Do you remember that? Getting up and taking a leap? Yeah, did it bother you? No. Right? Yeah. Because it was like. The reason you're wetting the bed is because you had to take a leak at uh, 1 a.m. or three or four hours after you went to bed. That's why you wet your bed. Then I have further vindication for you. We'll discuss later about the chronic fatigue syndrome. Oh, well, I know those tards are making that up. Jennifer? Yes. <clears throat> How are you guys? Hey, Good. Good. What's up? Yeah, I was wondering about yeah. masturbation. Yeah. Good times. Um, yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm doing a persuasive speech tomorrow in my communications class mm -hmm. and um, discussing the benefits of it. Benefits? Yeah, so I've, I've come across a whole bunch of benefits, but I was wondering maybe what you guys thought were the major benefits. And then I also have another little side question I came across in my reading. Um, I was just talking about older people and how you can continue to masturbate all throughout your life. And I was wondering, um, are the orgasms that you get when you are 75 plus, just as good or better. Or they, they, for me, Don't, let's just yeah, answer yeah. first question. We'll get to our second one. Okay. The second one is easier, frankly. All right, go ahead. That men, it kind of fades sort of slowly over time, but they can still have some pretty good orgasms. Mm -hmm. uh, women, it changes a lot over time, particularly with menopause. Mm -hmm. They can have sort of unsatisfying or impartial, you know, and particularly when they're going through menopause and through all those hormonal and biological changes. Usually people find a place where this, things are pretty good most of their life. Uh-huh. Yeah. So is there a way to kind of... Keep it going good? Yeah, just keep well, doing it? There's, it's not just the masturbation, right? It's the hormonal context in which that goes okay. on. So there's discussions about keeping men on this menopause, keeping men on testosterone until later in life, uh -huh. and certainly women on estrogens and progesterones, that, that can help it. Uh -huh. Estrogen and testosterone creams sometimes yeah. in the vaginal, these things, they'll help maintain the physiology of that area. What do you do with the cream? Where do you, you put you, it? In, as you would say, in the cruise. That's really? Your, yeah. In the... Yeah. Do tell. Mm. Jennifer? There's other uh -huh. creams. There's also transdermal creams and things. But what kind of what kind of school are you, you? Is this junior college? Oh no, I'm at Humboldt State University. It's funny because like you sound intelligent, so it didn't sound <laughs> junior collegey. But the topic was definitely junior college driven. But Humboldt sort of explains, <laughs> sort of takes care of both of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's what this what, what, college on. on that's that's sort of it, that's sort of a junior. Co Everyone is so high they don't know that Humboldt is a junior college. Oh, uh, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Uh, all right, uh, all right. So, so you want to know uh, what about masturbation? What now? are the benefits? Yeah, the benefits mainly. Um, well, I know about a whole bunch of them already, but I was just wondering what you got, you guys had. It, like. It's different for men and women. I think you should talk about it differently for the different sexes. Well, what, what Lori? What do you think the benefits of uh, masturbation are for women? Oh, it makes you smile a lot. <laughs> yeah. Satisfying. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't need your man around all the time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've basically got all those ones down. Jennifer's like, yeah. <laughs> Jennifer's like, I could have done Jennifer that. Jennifer wants some new angles. <laughs> I'm an advocate. Yeah. Um, what about all the water it, it wastes the, uh, in the tub? Electricity, there? batteries. Electricity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're supporting the economy. Well, that's true. Yeah. But, oh, that's true. How yeah. about how China. about that it helps women, you know, the, before they're sort of figuring out how they function, helps them yeah. learn that. Yeah. And for men, it might maintain testosterone levels if you're not overdoing it. It, it. Sort of for men, having a certain modicum of sexual activity maintains their testosterone levels. They kind of drop off if they're not having enough. Okay. They'll drop off if they're having too much. And, you know, domestic violence goes down and then it's, this stuff goes down. You're kidding. Are you really kidding? No, I mean, because look, look at it this way. We'll tell you a story about the, the windbreaker. Okay. And the, and the masturbatory... Uh, well, well, it, it, listen, I've, I've known a few guys who have made, who've tried to go a few weeks, you know. Uh-huh. Like, uh, I got a, working with a guy named Rick right now who's going for like 28 days. Why? Because Jimmy said to give him $1,000. <laughs> so, so how do you, how does he know that he's not doing it on the... Yeah, smart because guy. Because we're gentlemen. 
Also, you can see, you man, can see the evidence. Any man who would uh, enter into a masturbatorial bed is a gentleman. What if he has a, a, a nocturnal emission? Does that uh, restart yeah, the clock? Does that count? I, I think that counts as a slip up, and no <laughs> sex, <laughs> no no sla sex either, by the way. But he's edgy as all hell, this guy, and everything's starting to look good to him. Yeah. You, you know, guys and uh, raccoons, <laughs> any Cheers. any any orifice, any Bean opening, bags. knot holes, they all all starting to look good to uh, Rick now. So, How old is Rick? Well, Rick's a little bit older. He's probably uh, like 42. Oh, good times. Yeah. So he couldn't. You couldn't do this at 18. At, at 18. Couldn't, couldn't do it. No. No. He'd and, kill somebody. Yeah. You would. Well, that that's what I'm talking about. Well, they, look. They say domestic violence goes up during the Super Bowl. Guys watching a lot of violence. Drinking. Yeah. yeah, drinking. This is the opposite of that. This sort of takes the edge off. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, I'll rape tomorrow. Let's see. What, what, what you know, you procrastinate about things what, like what, what, rape. What, what, what other Th That's yeah. enough. Right. That's enough. I'm not writing her whole goddamn paper for her, Drew. She's been on, on the air for five minutes now. Robin? Hello? <clears throat> You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Hi. Hey. Um, I have a question about, like, a sleeping disorder. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes, like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night, and, like, I can't, like, breathe, and I, like, can't move for, like, a minute. Those are called sleep terrors. But okay. it's, I don't and, know. And they're pretty common, and they are, they're a, a relative of sleepwalking. Do you ever sleepwalk? Uh-uh. You, were you traumatized ever in your recent post-traumatic stress or something like that? Like what? I don't know. Something bad happened to you in the last few years? Like, give me an example of, like, mm, like You like tell some, us. Somebody if, died, sexual abuse, well, physical abuse. Hold on a abuse. second. Oh, yeah. Just tell us yeah. if something bad happened. Uh, a couple of things. Like what? Like some deaths in my family. Deaths recently? Um, a couple of years ago. Okay. And you said a couple of things. What was the other thing? <clears throat> well, like, a couple of deaths. Like, so who died? Um, my sister. Who? What happened? Like, cancer. And it happened to her, too. It always used to happen to her. Like, she would tell me about it. Night she terror. died of cancer? No, she had night. Yeah, she had night terror. So you... I know, but she said she died of... Cancer. Cancer. Yeah. yeah. But when, like, when she was still alive, like, uh, like, she would right. always tell me about them. Got it. Mm, awful. Hey, uh, well, emotion Robin, that counts as a bad thing that uh, could have happened. Yeah, emotional stuff like that can cause these kinds of things sometimes. There are other there are seizure disorders, and there are other medical problems that can be associated with it. So definitely you ought to go talk to your doctor and get tested to make sure nothing funny going on. I would not worry that you have cancer, Robin. It's oh, not no, no. I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. All right. Well, she was until Drew brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> she was fine. I was just, like, wondering, like, why that happens. The, it's a sleep problem. And they're, it's pretty awful. They're, they're, they're terrifying. That's what like they're called. Like and also I was wondering, like, if you... Does can stress cause it? Like, if you have more stress, is it more likely to happen? Didn't I just say that? I think so. That's I what know. I was. That's what I was suggesting, Robin. Uh, all right, Robin. Not just stress, but real heavy trauma and stress. Okay. You know, a major loss, a major trauma of some type. Who else died, by the way? Oh, my stepmom. Who? Stepmom and your sister died in what period of time? Oh, uh, they were like a year apart. Oh, jeez. Mm. Mm, wow. mm, mm, mm. How's your dad doing? Oh, um, he's hanging in there. Well, how'd your stepmother die? Uh, uh, she also had cancer, mm. too, but a different kind. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it was really weird. All right. But they were, like, different kinds and stuff. What'd All your right. sister have? Um, rhabdomyosarcoma. Oh, my goodness. And your mom? Uh, colon. Ugh. And she, like, never smoked or anything. Well, colon just... It, colon runs in families. So she's your stepmom, though. You're not related to her. The rhabdo is, is lightning bolt out of the sky. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, you still got to... Support we raise more money for those AIDS people, though. That's what I'm saying. That's the important part. Because that's a first. That's a first rate killer. There. You get them AIDS and that ALS thing taken care of. ALS? And, yeah. Then we go to cancer. Why'd that's you throw I'm ALS saying. in there? It just seems like they raise a lot of money too. ALS? No, really. They don't make any money. It's a pretty awful disease, though. Oh, ALS. it is awful. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no disease is good. I did know someone close to me who died of that. It's AIDS, just awful. AIDS is not a good disease either, though. True, you're making it like no. AIDS is a good disease. <laughs> Dick Weed, you're the one that said it shouldn't be raising so much money. I'm just saying, I want them all to go in order of whoever dies the, the most. Uh, get the most of. Really? Yeah, why? What do you want? Well, okay, let's get some. some things, you want something to go in alphabetical order? No, but some things are, you know, some things are natural history of aging, you know, that more people die of Oh, it yeah, it's, no, uh, this has got to be... Uh, young but, people. Well, yeah. not young. Let's say under, Cause, cause ALS, under 65. Because ALS, it's young people, and it, it and people who are completely intact takes them out. Yeah. Hey, Drew, you're the man's big fan of AIDS over there. What are you talking about? <laughs> Alex? 
Yeah. Whoa. No. All right, you're too bogus. <laughs> we don't believe you. <laughs> Already. You're we don't too believe, excited. We don't believe you worship based on your <laughs> syllable. No, but, uh, like, I'm serious, huh? Mm. I, I like to say Adam. I like you. I like the man <laughs> show. You guys rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If, if if it's real, it's insignificant. Let's put it that way. Uh, okay, but I can I can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, like every time I have sex with my girlfriend, like I don't know, every time I like I seem to get sick. I like I get. Turn your way, hey. That's, that's right. Jack off friends he's got there too. <laughs> it's so funny. It's just how many how many syllables in yeah? No, it's just yeah, and we were like, yeah, bogus, but. Drew, you said you called called Alex Bogus after one syllable. Yep. Ouch. That's like when I think he, he repeated his name, didn't he? It's Alex. Yeah. Alex. It's Alex. Yes. No, he just said he just said yeah. yeah. He just said yeah. It's kind of like name that tune. I can tell that jack off callers <laughs> bogus in eight syllables. <laughs> I can do it in one. Oh, you're good. Name that jack off. Uh, true. You don't even know how to go along with the game. No, they could go all the way down to one. I know, but for th- you sh- we should have gone seven. We should have gone back and uh, forth a couple. Watch. Try it again. All right. I can name that uh, jack-off bogus caller in seven syllables. Six. Uh, yeah, but you got to go, I can do it. I can do it in six syllables. I can do it in five. I can do it in four. I can do it in three. Two. Name that jack-off <laughs> caller. Okay. That was almost right. <laughs> We're uh, going to take ourselves a uh, little break. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Lori Fetters, our guest tonight. She is uh, Miss May out on uh, newsstands as we speak, and the uh, Donnas are going to be in here tomorrow night. So uh, we'll talk to those gals. Laura? Hi. You're 18? This is a yeah, chance for you, Adam, to impress Lori. Mm-hmm. Laura. I know, Laura. What's the question? <laughs> okay. My question is, well, I remember, Adam, you say that you were a ceramics major in high school. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Is that a major? <laughs> It was in my high school. Well, <laughs> that's how he strengthened his mind. In my high school, <laughs> that's <laughs> in my with, with, um, with feldspar and uh, and uh, what's the other the goop slip slip <laughs> slippage and feldspar. In my when I was in high school, they had us at some point in our senior year uh, declare a major. We had to declare a major in I, high school. Senior yeah, year? Yeah. Everyone else wants to know what, why, and uh, <laughs> I have no idea. I, I didn't. I didn't take the SATs. I never even took algebra. I never took anything. <laughs> I, I was. I took ceramic classes. It, the only class I wasn't failing was ceramic, so I declared that my major. <laughs> then I had to take two ceramic classes the next semester. <laughs> yeah, it's good times there, Laura. Well, it's, a, it served me well. It served me well. Uh, the L.A. Unified School District uh, had me raring to go. I mean, when, when I, by the time I graduated high school, I was, I was in prime shape for cleaning carpets. Hey, I think they, you're a genius. Uh, yeah, I am. That's the point. Jackasses. Literally, I should sue all of them. Right? Literally a millionaire and literally a genius. But go ahead. Well, I have an exam on Tuesday. I was just hoping you could give me some uh, expertise on You have an exam in ceramics class? Uh, material science. What does that mean? It's like <laughs> ceramics, polymers. Polymers, Adam. That was before your time. We I mean, half things that small. They had weathered felspar, and that was it. The smallest <laughs> thing we had was uh, juju bees when I was in high school. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't have all this DNA and all these cells and nylon. polymers. No they nylon. Didn't have that. No. no. So what? Uh, you like plastics and ceramics? You're taking a test in? Yeah. No, you're Fine. not. What, what are you talking about? Yes, I am. What class is it for? Material science. No, I'm an you... engineering student. Oh. All right. Lord, well, he's a ceramic. He's a ceramic. Threw, threw pots. What question? You, you want to know about a slab pot, a, pot, a coil? coil pot, pinch pot? Whatever you got. I just want to impress the professor. Tell him. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Called the wrong guy. Yeah. Wear something tight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh you women gosh. with your schooling, stre- strengthening your mind, please. Yeah, ceramics major. They didn't. They had to know that wasn't going to pay great dividends. They didn't care. No, that was just warehousing. They needed to get you through. It was yeah. just warehousing over there. Ridiculous. Ceramics major. Meanwhile, uh, no geography, for instance. Mm. I had no idea. 
They, you know, you I should did, see the geography of my kids. I didn't there? know Cleveland was in Adam. Ohio. I thought Cleveland was a state, like, when I was in my high school. My kids had to come up with every sea and bay in the world. It's like, like 150 of them. Yeah. I, I crazy. I know, I know Santa Monica and... Uh, Van Nuys. Van Nuys. And I know, I'm trying to think of a sea. <laughs> <laughs> Got, like, a Caspian and a Sultan. <laughs> Megan. Hey, uh, Megan. Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. What's up? Um, yeah. Um, my dad gets drunk a lot, mm -hmm. and one time he got really, really drunk, and he was, like, talking to records, and he jumped down a flight of stairs, and we were convinced he was on something else, but the hospital took a pee test, and nothing else came up in it. Okay. Um, so he drinks, mom, a, he drinks a lot, a lot, right? Yeah, he, like, really overdid yeah. it that night. Right. Well, he, he, he blacks out, too. Yeah. But beyond blacking out, he's becoming psychotic. He's, yeah, he's talking he's like to things. That, uh, records that have yeah. yeah, but I've, I've had friends do that a, there quite can, a few There can times. be various kinds of psychosis from intoxication with alcohol. There can be toxic psychosis where they get depressed and suicidal. You had a friend that, that would run down the halls like screaming like a maniac. Yeah, a those few are, friends. Those are manic, you know, sort of toxic reactions. Yeah, but it reactions. Wasn't, wasn't from the amount that he drank. No, that, in saying. that guy. But in other guys, it can be at a certain threshold they'll start to manifest. Yeah, into. I'm sure he's drinking pretty good, but yeah. he also... It, it, there's not enough booze to get us to do that. We pass out in our own vomit. That's probably true. But what? But what? And, but it can even be a seizure manifestation. Be all kinds of things. And what she's saying is never ha that had never happened before. And all of a sudden he gets wacky like this. So what's the question, Megan? Well, um, my mom said that what she, he was doing was he was drinking lots of different kinds of alcohol. And then no, yeah. Megan, here's the deal. It, it doesn't matter. What matters is that he gets treatment for his alcoholism. He needs to be in a hospital. He needs to be detoxed in a highly monitored situation. Alcohol withdrawal can be fatal a certain percentage of the time, maybe 30, 40 percent. 30, 40 percent? Well, saying, I mean, if you just if stay severe, home. DTs can be, let's put it this way, DTs can be fatal. And somebody that's drinking as heavily as he is, he sounds like he's at a reasonable risk for DTs. And uh, DTs is a, this sort of overwhelming syndrome of alcohol withdrawal. And so he, and he needs treatment for his alcoholism. And that's going to take some time. Any chance he can get some? Well, they were going to put him in the hospital, but he wouldn't do the in... Um, Person one, yeah, he's inpatient. Like outpatient, yeah, yeah, like out, still drinking. Yeah, outpatient will not work for him, and you need yeah. to tell the people the outpatient program that he's drinking. Okay. Yeah. Could, um, my mom's trying to get a lawyer involved because my mm. foot, like, he like did something to it, and I have trouble walking. But she doesn't know if they have the power to put him oh, in an inpatient. Yeah. Um, okay. Th they're sort of. Y y it's not against the law in this country to drink yourself to n craziness and death. Really? Yeah, but you God can. Bless this you, what you're gonna? It, unfortunately, with your dad, he's so out of it. You're gonna have to be able to break through all that and get him to acknowledge what he's been doing. No. And that's gonna be tough, and it may mean leaving him uh, and setting him out on the street for a while. Yeah, I mean, can't you just hire a drifter to kill him? No, these, these things are <laughs> no? very treatable. He'll be okay. Yeah. Hey, Megan, you gotta Alateen. you gotta go to Alatine. Alatine. In the meantime. Uh, yeah, I did that for a while. I didn't like that. Well, find another group. All right. You, you need some help with this. This is tough. Sorry about your dad. Try not to take it personally. Okay. You know what? Do, do, Just you hear that? with your stuff. That's his decision, all right? Yeah. You yeah. hear that? You it's don't not, have to go down fault. with him, all yeah, right? It's not your fault. Okay. All right. Come on. Yeah? Yeah. All right, baby doll. Listen, I know, I know you're upset, but everyone listening to this show and everyone in this studio has got a bunch of F-ups for parents, including Lauren in that <laughs> group, too. I don't know what you think your parents, but... It comes a certain point where they're going to make their mistakes. They're going to go their direction. You just have to go your own. That's it. It's, and, it's, and, and, it's, not, it's not be, and not take responsibility for them, be, be the parent, and, and, or think that you've caused it or if you've been a better daughter or whatever. Right. It's not, not at about at you. It's not yeah, about they're you. making their own decisions. And, and it's a disease. That, this, if he'd gotten cancer, that would have had as much to do with you as his alcoholism. Yeah. Except for he wouldn't have uh, gotten naked and jumped off the balcony <laughs> down in the living room and tried to make out with his daughter if he was a colon cancer or something like that. Although I'm no doctor. I don't know what the symptoms are. Uh, this whole mix in the booze thing, I, yeah, I, I, I it just this is a wives' tale. Well, I, I, except it, I, I have my questions about tequila, <laughs> i got to tell you. All right, tequila, tequila might, be one exception. might get you going a little, yeah. but... I, maybe it's just the me, rest but of it is ridiculous. I'll it's have a beer, point. I'll have a highball, I'll have a bottle right. of wine. It's just booze is booze. Yes, right. absolutely. And, and, and people go, well, he mixed his drinks. Nah. Yeah, well, he had a couple shots of tequila, had a couple <laughs> shots of vodka, then he had three beers and a bottle of wine. Yeah, he's sick because he drank so 70 much. ounces yeah. of alcohol. So it's much. not because he, yeah. he mixed them. Right. It's, 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 it's superstition almost. People like They saw it go down that way and they tried to make sense of it through their own 
crazy prism. Yeah, if you really think about it, uh, you're mixing booze, wine, and vodka. What difference does it make? Doesn't you're make getting loaded. It does not make any difference. Yeah. All right. Well, good times. Lori Fetter's here tonight. She is a uh, playmate. She is uh, in the uh, current May issue, which is out on newsstands as we speak. And we'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. True. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Lori Fetter's our guest tonight. She is uh, Miss May. She is uh, out on the uh, current issue of Playboy, which is out on newsstands as we speak. We were, uh, Drew was talking to Lori during the break about earthquakes. I rented the movie <laughs> Earthquake and watched it uh, Friday night. Thank you, you, Drew. Yes, I did. Drew was reading, so there was a little delay there. But yes, yes, I did. With uh, Heston and... Uh, Chuck Heston, George Kennedy... It wasn't Lauren Green. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's crazy. I remember that was just after that 70s quake, and it was sort of hard to watch it. It was so, you know, yeah. post-traumatic stress type reaction. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I, I don't know. I seem to be the only one who likes to do this stuff. But go get some weird movie from uh, your childhood and watch it. I watched so, Jaws this weekend, strangely enough. And there you go. And it was it was so campy, it was bizarre. But you were 33 when that came out, Jaws. That's not your child. Relax. <laughs> at ease. <laughs> at ease. No, Jaws, I mean, the special effects may not have been great looking back on Jaws. It, Jaws was campy. Uh, it was, the, it the was, story hell holds up no, pretty good. Adam, I swear to God, it was like, like melodramatic. All right. Campy. All right. I'll catch your fish. Thanks, uh, Tim, for our uh, cherry pie here. Yeah. <laughs> reading pie. Tim uh, is a uh, young man who uh, made some, uh, outbid some other guys. Donated some money to charity, I guess. Mm-hmm. SC Business School, I think. And uh, SC Business School needs charity. What? That's a, that's a <laughs> joke answer. But your rich kids gonna rule the world one day? Gotta give them money. Just enjoy the pie. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, the point is, he came over and he brought a pie, which is uh, it, it's the fastest way to my heart. <laughs> Laura, you eating pie? I think I'm going to. Yeah. Screw that diet BS. You got oh, nothing to worry about. I don't eat everything. That's my girl. <laughs> Sabrina? Yeah. You're 23. Yes. What? I have a question about polyurethane condoms. Mm-hmm. Yes. Go ahead. Um, well, I know that you can't use a latex condom while you're using uh, cream for a yeast infection because it breaks down the uh, <clears throat> stuff in the latex condom. And I was wondering if you could use a polyurethane condom while using... Medicine well, for yeast infection. Let me just say the polyurethane is fine. Um, what kind of, I mean, the creams you're using are they? They have a, a hydrocarbon base to them. Oh God, I don't know. Did um, they tell you not to? Use, did somebody tell you not to use a condom? It says in the directions not, not to, to use it. Okay. Latex condoms. Because it breaks down. They they don't work so well. Yeah, it breaks All right, down. So there must be some. Uh, can cause um, micro holes. All right, so there must be some. Uh, some. Uh, let me let me say this, Drew. There's there's a, a goddamn warning on everything. Yeah. Right. Yep. And that warning is because uh, there's one tenth of one hundredth of one percent yeah. chance that something may happen and right. the company could get sued. I would like a second warning for non-retard adults who uh, had an ass full of the attorneys in this country and could make our own goddamn decisions, saying, we had to put the first warning on here, but there, don't worry, there's only one-tenth of one-hundredth of one percent that it's actually going to happen. We had to put a warning. So then I could make my mind up. Right, you can yeah, make it, yeah. Because right. they put a warning like this is going to happen when it you're really... you're totally scared. For yeah, when the reality know. is, is it, 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 it's probably not. But I, I don't I don't know how the second warning goes, and then I don't know when to believe the first warning anymore. And to be clear, I I'm not sure if polyurethane is safe with. Uh... Well, what which one's more durable in general? Do you have any idea? I would think polyurethane would be. <clears throat> All right, also, and it doesn't it doesn't say anything about polyurethane on there. It doesn't. But All right, then use it. Then use okay, it, and then okay. sue sue their ass off. Anything happens. But it's not a well-known condom, and I also had a question. It's not uh, completely. Well, approved I would, yet. Trojan makes a polyurethane condom. I mean, that's they're out there. Yeah, it's not approved yet by the FDA. For well, for use. STD, yeah, yeah, they have STD they have, protection. Right, right but it, it it's protects. it's good. Oh no, it's good. Okay, okay, yeah. that's all I wanted to know. But. Thank you. Um, Again, it's it's the Vaseline. It's the I'm not using the right word. Hydrocarbon is not the yeah, right word. It's petroleum. The, it's the petroleum base, and so you have to check the creams, things you're using. If there's any petroleum base, there must be in this yeast cream. Really? 
And there must be. That must be what dissolves. Well, maybe there are other things that dissolve, but that's the most common thing we think of is dissolving yeah. polyurethane. Well, how hard I mean, could it be? dissolving latex. How difficult could it be to get through a micron of something? You, you know what I mean? I mean, a sperm, if you're a sperm? No, I mean, if you have to dissolve something. Mm. I mean, stuff's thinner than a human hair, pretty right. much, when it gets stretched over your uh, wanker, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Except, yeah. Laura, you're not a condom girl, are you? <laughs> Do I wear condoms? Well, I can't. You know, you never tried one of those uh, dental dams or anything like that, right? No. No, not for you. No. You roll the dice. That's fine. I like that. You you live and let live. You, right? You an atheist? No. What are you into? Chew. I knew it. What are you into? What do you like? You like God? Yes, I do. Fan of God? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of more spiritual. More spiritual. All right. Is that God? Not, not any God. Hmm? Not Jesus? Not God. into Jesus? Christian? Hmm? <laughs> I was baptized Catholic. You were. Your parents pissed off about the pictorial? Not as much now as they were. They were. Yeah. yeah. Did you have to call them first and sort of, or did you, did you commit and then call them? I commit. I, I committed. I did it, and then I called them. Then you, you call them. them. Well, I did that all like a year and a half ago, so they've mm -hmm. had some time for it to sink in and scream at me a lot. But mm -hmm. they're okay now. Yeah. Who is more mad, Matt, dad or mom? Mom. Really? really? What's dad do? Uh, my parents work together. They have their own business. Mm -hmm. Work out of the house. Uh, they used to work in the house. Now they work out of the house. Wow. What do they do? Uh, they own a business that teaches children to draw. Really. Yeah. Well, your dad invented that turtle that says, if you can draw me, or is it the pirate? No. Really? No, my mother was an artist, and she loved kids, so she found a way to do both. Do you have brothers and sisters? I do. Wow. A bunch? I have two sisters and a brother. Hmm. How, old are, how old are the sisters? 18 and 16. Yeah, perfect. Down boy. Where are they? <laughs> Chicago? Yes. I'm going to send for them. <laughs> I'm going to have one of my guys, I'm gonna have one of my guys uh, get out there. <laughs> There's no, no with private big, jet. No, with a big got net, a, big like the net that the for the funny farm. Got a van, farm. yeah. <laughs> so go out there and collect them. I'll bring them back. Don't worry, I'll bring them along slowly. <laughs> Alive? Jeez. Are they? Do they look like you? Yeah, one yeah. of them's a lot taller than me. Ooh. The other one looks a lot exactly like me. Nice. Is that 16 or 19? Uh, 16 year old, and I look very much like the 18 year old. Is about maybe like four inches taller than me. All right, I'll bring both of them. Okay. Sabrina. Yeah. You're 23. Oh, we already talked to you. Yeah, we already right. did. Drew got into his uh, cherry pie, and I got into my cherry pies. <laughs> oh, relax. <laughs> Rochelle. Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's up? Um, I've been having a lot of trouble sleeping. Um, my friend was killed on March 31st. What happened? Um, he was murdered. Oh my gosh. I'm and sorry. um, I was there like about five minutes after it happened. Mm. Uh. And um, saw the blood and everything. And um, since then, I haven't been able to really get to sleep. Well, hang on a second. Let's get into something. Who, who bit. murdered? Yeah. Who murdered him? One of his roommates. Um, they're claiming self-defense, but um, we know that that's not what really happened. Is this a drug-related thing? I I don't think so. I don't know what happened though. Why did he murder him? I don't know. He claims self-defense, but I know it wasn't. What is it? So well, wait a second. Self-defense from self what? Hmm. Self-defense from what? I don't know. He says he says that um, my friend was like molesting him or attacking him or something. But um, I know that that's not true. How do you know these guys? Um, he's like my neighbor, and um, I practically lived at his house last summer, and just we've been really close for the past like three years. How old was he? Um, thirty or something like that. He was either twenty nine or thirty. You're fifteen, living at a thirty year old's house. Well, basically, like I'd come home, but. Um, I'd stay over there till about 11 o'clock at night or something. Hold on a second. And it's her best friend. I, I wasn't even paying attention to her age. What is going on tonight? No, no, oh, this no, is that's the best normal life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is yeah. going on with the youth of America? Oh. Uh, uh, no, we've had bad nights. This is not a bad We had a bad night was when the guy was twisting the head off of the corpse. Yeah. That was a bad night. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I want to hear about that mm -hmm. night. Yeah. We'll tell you during the commercial <laughs> over some cherry pie. Uh, Rochelle's, and, and what, you know these people, uh, their best friend, and then you go, how old, and they go, eh, 29 or 30, like, they don't even know the age of their, uh, best, best friend. friend. Yeah. yeah. And the, guy, the guy's twice as old as uh, she is, and, okay, so there's, a, okay, there's three things going on. 
One is this guy was a piece of work, I'm sure. Yes. Two, whatever went down with him and his roommate it probably had something to do with drugs, or maybe there was uh, some uh, self-defense going, or going maybe on. Or hanky-panky between them. or Whatever. And number three, uh, I think Rochelle, oh, oh, well, although justifiably traumatized by this whole thing, I think it's probably putting it in a little well, different term than maybe it was. But I don't, let me this just is say her best friend. That people that get post-traumatic stress disorder usually have a pre-existing trauma that sort of gets reactivated. That's what I'm so. thinking. Rochelle? Mm -hmm. um, so this, uh, this guy, now why is it you went over there and, and found the body? Because um, I saw he was um, just, he was a gay guy and his partner was out side um just like absolutely just um glazed over look and um absolutely terrified and so i went over to see what was going on well wait a minute he, he is your neighbor now yeah okay yeah and so like and I then you're to, living at home yeah well yeah and i just i'd stay over there most of the time you, you'd go over there during the day yeah and then um stay there till late at night you wouldn't sleep over though no she said she came so, out at 11, though. Yeah. Yeah, this, these guys, this the gay guys who are in the apartment next to yours, and you go hang out and party with them, right? Yeah, they're actually, two, like, two houses down, but yeah. Were you doing drugs with them? Uh-uh. What would you do all, all night? we just, like, talk or whatever. Okay. And, um, you know, watch TV, hang out, listen to music. Just... All right. And so what was your pre-existing trauma? Uh, well, I've... I'm bipolar, and I've just, I've had trauma, like, all my life. I had, when I was, like, seven, um, I had a gun pulled on my mom and I. All right. And, um. Were you physically abused or sexually abused growing up? Yeah. People claim that, like, people deny it and stuff, and but, nobody will do anything about it, so. But you think that happened to you? Yeah. All right. All right. So, so now you walk into another trauma, and, boy, it causes everything to resurface, right? Yeah. So you have panic attacks, you get depressed, you can't sleep, you have flashbacks, right? Yeah, and like oh, when I found they put me on a what is it, Seroquel? Yeah, good. Along with my other medications mm -hmm. to try to get me to sleep, but even that, like I'll wake up and that's like all I can think about. I'll just like wake up and then I won't be able to get back to sleep. Well, that's what PTSD is. All right. Are so. you are you getting trauma therapies of any type and beside medication? Yeah, I have therapy. All right. And I just I want I guess I wanted to know if this would ever like go away or. It, yes, yeah. it it should. Here is a horrible thing about PTSD is that it it's. You, you got to kind of live with it for a while. Really? Yeah. And the way you get through it most effectively is through these sort of interpersonal, in my opinion anyway, these interpersonal kinds of connected therapies. And I, I'm sure you're into group therapies too. Sometimes it can be very, very helpful to be in groups with people that have been through what you've been through. For instance, torture victims, when they when they um, mm -hmm. come back, they won't, yeah. they won't really open about what happened unless they're in a room with people who know have been there mm -hmm. and addicts do the same thing and ptsd survivors maybe sometimes let me uh let me ask you this <clears throat> is there uh, a uh, toenail clipper made that does not shoot the toenail 50 feet in the uh, opposite direction of wherever you're trying to keep it yeah i they won't even get the sink is not big enough no, no. To get the room, room has to bounce off no. the wall. I mean, I'm done with that. Rochelle, uh, my my thing, I'm getting a toenail thing now. Yeah, I know that. I mean, Rochelle's thing is, is she needed some therapy before no. the neighbor thing. I know. Don't put all your eggs into that basket. Yes, it's, well, it's traumatizing for sure, uh, and you can have your feelings about it. But overall, you've had a life of this. But she now has a new syndrome, and it's being managed, and Sarah has a good medication. Fine. And Let's get to it. the Clippers. Yeah. I I uh, clip my toenails. Uh, the uh, well, it's not even just toenails, fingernails too. Fingernails, fingernails, but they're not as, they're not as dangerous. Yeah, Th these they, things they don't are go for these the things eye. are projectile weapons. They, they, these go to the eye. They're, they're aim at the eye somehow. They could go to the eye. They could go for the toilet. They could go for the nuts. Yeah. They go anywhere but in the place you're trying to do them. And comically, I always think I'm going to do it. I do. I put my foot up on the bathroom sink. I'm going to clip my toenails. I'm going to collect them. I have them fall in in one place. Shooting through the shower curtain, shooting in, shooting uh, into the uh, magazine rack, shooting into the toilet, shooting everywhere but wherever it is I'm actually putting them. Why don't you try doing that like in the bathtub? Because then I don't have that. Men don't use bathtubs. What about tubs. in the shower? Because then you've got you know three walls. I you could. Can kind of collect. But you them know all. that's how they're going to find me. 
I'm going to be, he, he was apparently either <laughs> trying to, over in the show. there's some <laughs> speculation, he may have been trying to blow himself, but we did find the clippers, <laughs> we did find the clippers next to me, right? oh, although suspiciously, none of the nails were clipped, none of the nails were clipped, so we think that the clippers could have been planted yeah, there. In the meantime, the nails, you were clipping the shower out on the carpet somewhere yeah. down the if hall. If I went into, here's what would happen, if, if I went into a 50-gallon metal drum and had somebody seal it, with uh, with uh, with a uh, with paraffin over the top and a uh, trash can lid, and tried to clip my nails, I would find those nails in my in my den yeah. three weeks yeah. from now. Yeah. I'd be walking barefoot. I'd step on something sharp, and I'd be, yeah. oh Christ, this is the nail I was cutting when I was in yeah. the 50 gallon drum submerged. Yeah, so there you'd be with your nuts in your face. 53 to water. Yeah. But here's all I'm saying. That's how I'd find you. Somebody needs to make a toenail clipper that does not send the. Sh they, oh, I almost used the S word, not to send the stuff flying 100 miles an hour in every different direction or find a direction that it's going to go. And let's do it. Or maybe a little collection bag, like a yeah, ride along lawnmower. Like put a bag over your foot with the toenail. No, not over the foot. Yeah, I want to put it over the foot. No. The How can I in, see? I can't see. It. I can't, can't see. It could be, it could I wanna, be like wanna, a see through no. one. I, yeah, but now my foot's getting all sweaty. But you're collecting the toenails and they're not in your den. I want the bag hooked up to the clipper. With a it, vacuum it could device. Be. A vacuum that sucks them in. No, oh. that's too expensive. Just a catch thing. <laughs> Just a toenail clipper that knows the direction <laughs> that the toenail's going and catches it in this little bag. And once every six months, you empty it out. You should invent that. I'm working on that. Now everybody else knows about it. Don't worry, our stone listeners. <laughs> they, they, they couldn't pee in their pants if their pants were on fire. They couldn't, they couldn't get that kind of initiative going. Megan? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. You know anything about a toenail clipper? <laughs> no. See? Isn't this the third Megan we've had tonight? Seems Another like we've Megan. had too many Megans. <laughs> What's up, Megan? Okay, I just had a baby about three and a half months ago. Right on schedule. <laughs> What's up? And I did the normal bleeding and I stopped, and then I had my regular period, and then I stopped that, and then my next period started, and then it stopped. And then um, ever since then, I've been bleeding about every week, and I'd stop for like two days, and then I'd start bleeding again. Did they give you the Depo Provera shot by any chance? No, I'm on orthocy orthocycline. And did they try changing you? Uh-huh. Have they tried changing the pill type? Um, they put me on orthotricycline at first, and then they changed me to orthocycline. Okay. You should change again. Mm-hmm. Do you have had experiences? Yes. With orthocycline? Should, with, yeah, with a few different ones, and I reacted differently to all of them. You should switch again until you find one that that fits you correctly, and it will go away. Okay. Did they talk, one one caveat, though, did they talk about doing it at DNC? No. Because it's been four months since you delivered? Almost. Cause the, it, sometimes there could be what are called retained products of conception, but that's usually in the first few weeks afterwards. Mm -hmm. We get some bleeding and stuff, some stuff sort of left behind from the My pregnancy. little clipper bag would catch that, too. Yeah, well, it, 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 could, it could serve dual function. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but I, I agree with what Lori says. That you got to keep going back and finding something that, that works. Hey, Megan. Yeah. Is there a father around? Um, no. For all I care, he can die. <laughs> he can die? Shock. Yeah. Shock. Right. Our, our callers? Shock. Is he doing well, anything? What? 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 I put my daughter up for adoption. Oh, I want a, oh. I want a, I want a, I want a statue erected in your honor. We're going to send you out a windbreaker. Megan, that, that's very courageous. Did, did it find a good home? Yeah, I still get to see her like every two weeks, and the adoptive parents are amazing. Oh, that's good. Megan, God bless you. How's the, how's the two-week deal worked out? It's, it's an open adoption. It's new. Not a whole lot of people know of it. Did, did you set it up as visitation every two weeks? Yeah, it's kind of something we both worked. That's how they, they, the adoptive parents both worked on it. They're allowed to decide how they want to do it, whether it's yeah. a picture that they send. I know, but hold months. on a second. I got to talk behind uh, Megan's no, hey, back. No, first of all, just it's a good thing. Yes, it's a good you. thing. Thank it's you. a good thing. Thank you. Now, the open adoption thing, I I don't agree with, but I I don't think that the new parents work that out. I think no, the, the, that becomes a term. Oh, it, absolutely. That they have to comply with. They, they, this sort of a negotiation, a that casual just, negotiation. It just seems like something that would just get harder and harder as yes. time goes by yep. for both yep. parties and I agree. for everyone involved. I think the way to do it is to get a, like a letter and a, an update every six months or something. I mean, kind of I mean, even that. But I mean, it's just like I, I feel like you put it up for adoption and you do that, and then that, that's it. I mean, I. You, you made that choice, and whether it's something you made a choice when you're young, I think it's healthier for the child mm -hmm. and for everybody else involved, mm -hmm. maybe for you just to stay out well, of it mo after Most that. of the reason, 
I hate to uh, bust uh, Megan's chops, but most of the reason it is healthier for the child is because the people that are now going to raise your child are more equipped and more exactly. qualified to do it. Exactly. And your your presence is sort of a confusing presence, I would think. I mean, it doesn't. I, I don't. I don't think it's the kiss of death. I just dispute the part where the adoptive parents try to work it out. I think they're working it out because they don't have a choice. Right. I'm curious though, Megan. Yeah. Do do the uh, how does it work with the new parents? Do they um, want this? Yeah, they went to my doctor's appointments with me while I was still pregnant. They were the adoptive mother was in the delivery room when I had her. Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they they want the child. But do they want you? Yeah, they want me to be known. They want her to know me. Some I can see some parents. There's a book I want y'all to read. It's called The Open Adoption Experience. I haven't even read our book. <laughs> i got to be honest with you. Yes, I wrote a book and haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> I, I, I will vouch for that. So I'm not going to read In fact, this even when we even when we wrote it, you didn't write it. You sort of dictated it to me. Right. So here you go. Thank you. Um Megan, look, I, I, I agree with you. It, no one knows. The fact is, it's fine what you're doing. Look, it, we don't know what's, whether it's better or worse, or might be, you know, couple specific, and it, it's fine. Don't don't worry. You, you're, it's you did the right thing. You did yeah. the right thing. It, hopefully, this will be something that will work for the three or four of you, and that'll be fine. Do you think you, you get any money from it? You can't sell your kid, can you? Oh my gosh. Well, you can sell. You well, can overseas. Well, no, but you can carry a child for money, yeah. can't you? Yeah. What's the big difference? Because it's creating a market in children, as opposed to but a market. children. Children are our future. As opposed to like a, futures, like soy. As opposed to a market for a you service. Have to start training this. A market for a service, which is carrying the child. Uh, See the difference? Yeah, it's a huge difference. Yes. One is for the oh, end product. Cares. The other is for the carrying. This is another uh, new business uh, venture. We're at. This is a big. The, Toenail clippers and children. Oh, listen. Who cares? Oh my. People want kids. <laughs> You know, what the hell do we care? Let's go Give to break. The stupid kids. <laughs> I gotta go to pee. Come on. All right. Lori Feather you're, you're, you're what, what You are in the strangest mood tonight. Uh, it's, it's not exactly a bad mood. It's no. sort of like uh, yeah, I had, too had much, an ass full of everybody. I had everything. too much quiet time at home. <laughs> I didn't get to. You no, know you're, what you're in your construction mode. Oh, maybe that's yeah, it. Yeah. Maybe that, uh, it's like it's grounded I'm, you or something. I'm working on a yeah. house. I, I get fired up. Yeah, yeah. But no, you know what it is? Normally, I spend the whole weekend just sort of. Uh, Talking people's ears off and blowing a lot of hot air around. Precisely what he does. <laughs> right. That's not no no. An entire day of uh, listening to classical music and sort of lounging around the house. Uh, and working on the house. No, no, I wasn't just working. Lounging. I was just I was just lounging and listening to classical music and thumbing through architectural magazines. Oh, we preparing to. It's way too uh, cerebral for uh, me. Uh, I, I I had to, I, I wasn't yelling at anybody. It's screwed with you. You're not you're not good. I'll, I'll get All going right, though. No. All right, we'll be back. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. The Donnas are going to be in here tomorrow night. You know the Donnas, right, Drew? Yeah, I do, actually. You do? I saw them on TRL once. They're that sassy yeah. chick band. Doing pretty well, huh? I think they are. Yeah, I think I saw deal. them on uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Blah. Lori Fetter's our guest <laughs> right, tonight. Are up there? You okay? I'm all right. Can you not do that before you say my name? <laughs> I'll do it afterwards. Lori Fetter's our guest tonight. <laughs> she is uh, Miss May. Oh. My birthday's in May, so that makes her the hottest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking about how. Out on newsstands as we speak. You going to do uh, some videos and stuff? You have to. You got to do some videos, right? I mean, you know, for Playboy. I did my one You video. did your one? That's the contractually yes. obligated yes. one video, and that's it, huh? No oh, more? Yeah. I, I know the next question out of his mouth. Where's that video? No. <laughs> what they pay you? No, they, that's, that's part it. of the deal. But I usually ask about pay right around this point in the conversation. <laughs> oh, well, play, I think I think playmates get, like, they get the same amount, oh, do I they? think. They get a lump, right? It's it's all the same for everybody, isn't yeah. it? Do they, do, do, will they move it around? Like, if there's someone they really want? Uh, if there's someone they really want, well, I mean a, play, it, a playmate. As, no, Playmates, for a playmate, like that's it. What is it? Is it like twenty-five grand or something? Yeah. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. 
And uh, we've never had a straight answer on that either before. Really? Well, <laughs> yeah. y- usually people get all weird about money, and uh, especially if they do Playboy, they get weird about it. The, the girls do because it, not the playmates, because the playmates are like, "Hey, we wanted to do this. It's going to help my career, or I've wanted to do it." Not not you, but most of them. They weren't uh, they weren't having their brains enlarged at UCLA. <laughs> yeah, they were just working some tractor out in Montreal or in Iowa or something, oh, and they just came out to do it. But the, the point is, is they uh, the ones that don't want to talk about it are the ones who were bribed to pose. Like the, like the celebrity people. Yeah, it's like the, it. the chick from Survivor, she whatever, was, yeah, whatever she her was name was. She was the most elusive. Yeah, it's like she wouldn't do it. For, Jerry. Yeah, she wouldn't do it. And I was like, you wouldn't do it because they wouldn't pay enough. No, it had nothing to do with it the money. It was artistry. Please, crazy broad. Oh, our career's going. And I said... I said to uh, yeah Jerry from Survivor, I said, listen, you can negotiate, but at a certain point, the window's going to close oh, because yeah. there's going to be a new batch of chicks coming yeah. out on Survivor. So it's good to de- Didn't negotiate. Did she do it or did it? She did it, but, get, but Adam get, said get that to Get your her. money, get your money, but don't drag it on too long because they won't want you. Right. And, and she goes... Oh, this is not to do a survivor. I mean, I was, you know, I was working before yeah, this. She's this, like so incredibly uh, obnoxious yeah. and high that she thought they wanted Jerry, the oh. actress who happened to be in Survivor. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for her. And, and it was also you, you, you I, would. I, it makes every you don't have to talk to her for two know, hours. <laughs> I, I would love to do the study on what happens to people after reality television. Oh, well, did you ever see this? Did you see this in real life? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that's after reality. I love that show. Yeah. yeah. I saw Vince uh, Neal. That was hilarious. I saw no. Vince Neal in Vegas. Well, we had week. Corey on the show. Remember, Corey felt That's was true, up here. too. Yeah. Did he cry? Uh, no. No. He, the, uh, Did he, he had a similar kind of, he had a very similar vibe about him as it pertained to his career and why he was on Surreal Life. He, Remember? He, he had no idea that they were going to be ambushed. He thought it was a sort no, of an no. outrage. No, no. It was even worse. Adam goes, well, Jimmy and I had a great idea. We want to do something called Has Been House. <laughs> and he he reacted like, Has Been? What are you talking about? These people all have active careers. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. But his thing was, is we as celebrities were asked to come on to do this show just like eh, it, it, as if uh, Brad Pitt signed on to do CSI and then all of a sudden ambush with these crazy cameras and you know and it's like uh, listen they got together a bunch of screwballs who weren't doing anything yeah anyway I haven't been doing yeah. anything yeah although Vince uh, Neal a uh, great guy very nice guy they're all, they're all nice. guy. Listen, Corey's a good guy great too, guy no. great guy salt of the earth great guy Drew's right no not, not bad people can you oh, like, say that with a little bit of a nicer tone bad. in your voice? <laughs> I've known better people. You're ready to have. work on that tone of voice. Oh. Not a bad person. <laughs> Not evil. I'll give you that. He's been through a lot. Yeah. He's been through a lot. Yeah. yeah through a lot. Right, we'll all shed a tear and let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Allison? Yeah. You're 24? Hi. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Lori only seems sort of, you know, Lori's just so, sort of tolerating mixed feelings of, no about me but mixed feelings about her uh, playmate ism yes yes so it's like you feel like eh, it wasn't a bad move but eh, you would have lived if you didn't do it too right oh yeah yeah, yeah. Right, well, what's the big deal is there is mom there, and dad mom, mom and, and dad. dad pissed off no it was just you know it's a personal thing of like okay that's something i did but that's not at all who i am right and it's hard because you kind of get grouped with that group right of like, right Right, you'd want to you want to be uh, doing you want to be doing harder core stuff, right? <laughs> well, that was my dream. Right, she's doing more, more just... anal, and this is just <laughs> this is just frontal stuff. No, this no, This is not no. girl, girls, not three way stuff, no, no, no money no. shots. No. I hear you. Enough said. Enough said. <laughs> Oh You've made God. your point. Oh my God. She's made her point. This is above and beyond. I hope her folks are listening. Oh no, this the does point, go to Chicago. Dad, the point no. was made. Allison. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Hi. Allison, you're 24. Has it helped? Oh, you don't know yet. You don't because May is just upon us, right? Yeah. You know, it's, mm. D- did it do what you intended it to do? A little bit, yeah. 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 All right. Made 25 yeah. grand. Allison. Yes. Hi. All right. What's up? <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, first of all, I have a solution for your toenail clipper. <laughs> yeah. I actually have one that has a receptacle on the end of one of the handles that catches all the clippings. It's hard. I, I, <laughs> His eyes just lit no, up. No, you don't. <laughs> 
I was at my friend's house, and her fiancé had one. He was using it, and I, oh, my God, that's the greatest invention. Now, what, How does it what work? What does it look like, this receptacle? It, it's, this, it's, it's like a red piece of plastic that covers the bottom of one of the handles. That but things go up. They fly. I'm not getting a mental Things don't go down. Okay, you know those, they're like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a V-shaped nail clipper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the plastic is, is covering one of the sides, whichever one it is. And then it just it just catches everything. It, and it so works? It works. You clip your toenail <laughs> and or fingernail, and, yeah. and it goes into this container. Yes. And, and it goes to the side with... Without exception? And it stays in there, and it won't jump out or anything. Cause it, it, won't, it won't. I mean, you have to empty it after a while. How do you empty it? You, it, it? It detaches. You could just empty it. You have to send this to us. <laughs> we can't figure this out. Where, where did he get this device? I have no idea. I think he's he's from Canada, so I think oh, he's uh, 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 <laughs> Those Canucks, they're very crafty with their nail yeah, collection. I've <laughs> yes. known that a long time about those people. Interesting. Anyway, so my question is, um, I've been considering breast implants. Hold mm -hmm. on. We've been, we've been snaked by the uh, Canadians on this. Mm -hmm. We must beat the Mexicans. <laughs> I, fear the they, punch. I fear they may only be weeks away to from this technology. Punch. Immediately, let's go to work. <laughs> Mobilize your team. They've been on it for 30 years now. <laughs> They've scrapped the moon program. <laughs> we've got to beat them, Drew. It's a matter of, it's a matter of uh, pride. We've got to get that girl back in the line who is a materials... Uh, Engineer, <laughs> right? We All right, you. Allison, go ahead. Okay, so um, I've been considering breast implants, but um, my fear is that I think I'm allergic to plastic, mm. and that is what the bags are made out of, right? Now, what makes sailing. you think you're allergic to plastic? Well, um, I don't know if you, they came out with these things for girls for their periods. I guess they're called instead. Yep. Those cups. Yep. That's Oof. what they're made out of, right? Plastic. Yeah. Wait a minute, that may be my idea. I can, I'll <laughs> modify one of those instead cups and put it on the side of my clippers. With some duct tape. Yeah. So you're alert. Yeah, but well, what about, wait, wait, wait. So what's the reaction you're getting? So I, I had a very bad allergic reaction, like like very bad itching and swelling. That, that's and, a yeast infection. Well, it wasn't a yeast infection because I went to the doctor and they said it wasn't. It was just like, you know, if I were to get stung by a bee, I'd swell up and... Well, that's, that's all. I, I don't know what that was. I but mean, the, couldn't it have been something that was on there or coated could have been with a, or could something? Could have been a hundred different things, yeah, but I, yeah. I would not. Uh, plastic is inert for the most part. And also, everything in your, your, your I don't want to sound like a commercial. In but your world, uh, your car. Yeah, your, your steering wheel's got plastic so on it. unless your hands your, are swelling but out. Remote control in your TV. Well, another your, your toothbrush, <laughs> your toothbrush, for God's sakes. Well, but I had a, um, if it's like in my body for long periods of time, like I had a belly button ring that was plastic that I didn't take to that very well either. Yeah, but those all, well, first of all, that's the most common, one of the more common areas to have a rejection. You have a plastic belly button and ring? And there would be some metal. metal, it was some nickel in there, right? No, that, no, no, the whole thing was plastic. It was clear plastic. The whole hoop was plastic. Acrylic. Yeah. That'd be acrylic, though, right? Yeah, acrylic. All right, well, that's not, that's different. Okay. And, and still, it, that's a common area to have rejection, regardless of what the And And well, what about the uh, sack for the bag? Uh, We're back to the toenail clipper? No, no, I'm back <laughs> to the uh, breast implant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that? Inert. It's, it's a plastic. I don't know what it is. It's, okay. it's inert. That's not, no. People react to, they all leak a little bit of the silicone or saline, whatever, and that's what people react to. Right. So, so she'd probably so I, be all right with this. Yeah. Why is she going to do this? Why are you going to do it? Just, I don't know. I think they're nice, and I would like to have bigger ones. <laughs> all right. Where are you? Where am I? No, I mean, what's your size now? Uh, I'm a small uh, 34B. Small B. So small how B. big would you like to be? Um, uh, C. C. Top. Oh, see, now that's good. Now there's a reasonable girl. That actually right is what there. most women go to for a breast implant. That's implants. so good. Yeah. yeah. No, wait. A Let me see if Lauren has uh, real ones or not. I gotta check this. <laughs> see. Looks real. Nice. Uh, looks like a good solid real C. Yes. At that. Yeah, they're a good solid real D. Are they real D? Yeah. They don't look that big. I mean, you know. <laughs> Why don't you hold it a little bit closer to your face? <laughs> You'll get a better look at it. <laughs> No, I mean I, you know, I'm a boob guy. I'm a, this that's not a big D, is it? They when they took those pictures, they were probably about pretty big D, and I've lost a lot of weight since then. So. Oh, really? They're they're probably about 
they're about a good D, maybe full C right now. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Drew, look at this. Well, thank you. Oh, thank Drew's you a much. doctor. Drew's a doctor. Drew, what do you think? I think it looks, the, the picture looks like a f full solid C to me. Doesn't well, do you want to go bra shopping with me? Oh, yes. I could... Yes. <laughs> Use some help. Yes. You like to go underpants shopping with me? <laughs> Love That's some points I'd like to make. <laughs> All well, right. maybe you could find out and finally get your question answered about the whole system of how bras are sized. I can yeah. teach you. Do you know about this? Yeah. I'd... I mean, well, no, answer he me this. Answer me. They got it go A, B, C, D, double D. Right. Now, I'm saying if if I'm coming up for like like with the alphabet, I don't go A, B, C, D, D, <laughs> E, 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 F, F, F. How, why, why the double? Why not just go from D to E like human beings? Do you know what I'm saying? Like human beings? Yeah, like like like, like, like you go smart you go person. one two three four <laughs> smart four person. four five six seven <laughs> seven seven. What what kind of retarded approach to sizing is this? You don't count like that. No human being does. <laughs> I, I, I don't know don't about know. that. I really don't. Hey, Maybe it's knows. to make those women with double D breasts feel like they're not wearing they're still, e bras they're still the and they're D. still in that. Yeah. But then double D ends up having a connotation that's, you know, it just means huge cans. You know? <laughs> really, that picture's a, that's a, that's a big D? Yeah. Hmm. I might get some use out of this. After <laughs> just from a psychological standpoint. <laughs> nice. All right. This is good times. Lori Fetter's our guest tonight. She's uh, double D. <laughs> <laughs> At least a full D cup. Which I, I, the pictures really look, look, they look full C. Look full C. I, I, I hope they're D. We're going to have to get a few God girls knows. in here for you to compare. Please. Well, uh, yeah, it's a nice, that's a nice size breast, but it doesn't, it doesn't look like a humongo breast. It just, it just looks like a, looks like a nice full, full, full C. I'll ask some of the guys. Uh, I'm, I'll take it out of the street. <laughs> see what guys think. We'll take a quick break. We'll be losers. back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's uh, Dr. Drew. Phone number. Oh, forget about that. Lori Fetters, our guest tonight. <laughs> she's uh, she's playmate of uh, of May, which is uh, out on newsstands as we speak. She's getting more and more bitter about this playmate <laughs> thing as the uh, night wears on. She's uh, apparently uh, had her brain strengthened. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to wear that joke out to the end, huh? I just, for the people who have tuned in uh, more recently, you have to understand that I have a uh, little bio sheet that is written by uh, Junior, 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 Junior. She's added about 12 juniors tonight. Junior, Junior, Just with the commentary on the Producer Lauren, and one of the beats is she currently attends UCLA to strengthen her mind. So that's what we've been having fun with tonight. All right. To strengthen her mind. It's doing really well, by the way. Yeah. All right. Corey? Yeah? You're 18? Yeah, I am. What's up? Well, I have a question about heroin. Mm-hmm. It weakens your mind. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. And it sucks. Yeah. And I take it about every other day, if not daily. All right. That's every day. Yeah. How, do you, how do you take it? Are you smoking it? it or shooting it? I shoot it. All right. All right. Well, so I, I shoot off. it. Well, last night I, I shot it between my toes. Mm -hmm. I know my teeth started hurting and stuff, and I just wondered what the side effects are for it. Well, Adam loves it when I answer this one with, uh, well, you can die. Yeah, that's one of the side effects. Uh, and the real problem with heroin, there's two big issues with heroin, obviously. I put him on hold because he didn't turn his radio yeah. down, so you can talk to him. One is that it causes perhaps the most horrific form of addiction. It's very difficult to get off of because of the chronic changes in the brain. The feeling you are left with when you try to come off is almost intolerable. Not the withdrawal, but the residual effects on your brain. It's just the drives have been, your brain has been captured by this drug quite literally. The issue that you're dealing with right now, though, is the route in which you're giving yourself the drug can kill you easily. Injecting drugs into your vein is a profoundly dangerous behavior. Can cause. How do you inject it between your toes? Probably found a vein in there and just Th stuck you, it that in. That just there. sounds like it hurts. He, he, so I've never seen any bad. veins between my toes. You should check it out. He may have just done. May have ended up just intramuscular. I mean, they don't always get it intravenous. During some of my uh, uh, R and D sessions, when I'm developing my clipper with the mm -hmm. basket on mm -hmm. it, 
I'm going to check for those veins. In the toes. Mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't be surprised if he gave himself an abscess or something down there in the foot or some what's called cellulitis. Infection can go to the heart. You can cause kidney failure. The, 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 some of the talc is caught in your lungs. I mean, the medical complications are just... Uh, the list is endless, mm -hmm. but people die of this disease. It's unusual to see 30 when you're uh, shooting at 18. Really? Wow. Mm. All right, but you skip 30, you go right 31, right? Yeah, you just don't see 30. You go 29, you yeah. don't see 30, yeah. next thing you know you're 31. Huh. It's good no big deal. What the hell was I doing when I was 30? That wasn't a great year for me. A couple of roommates living in La Crescenta, driving an old Toyota. Think about that. I could have done okay. 30. I could have missed 30. 30. 31 was good, though. Was it? That's when I met Drew. That's when I found you. Yeah, it's when Drew discovered, discovered me. You, I mean. Discovered me. I was uh, I was hard at hard at work in my uh, basement lab, <laughs> working on the heated sofa. And listen, let me say this. Uh -oh. Let me say this about my heated sofa. I'm now at the point where I don't want money for this. I just want some jackass to invent it so I can buy one. Why don't you just get Jimmy and his buddies on it? They'll make you a custom. They laugh sofa. at me. They laugh at me really? for these ideas. Wow. It's just like uh, they laughed at uh, Da Vinci. <laughs> I'm not sure if they did, actually. They didn't laugh at him, did they? Yeah. Okay, there you walked go. Walked an alligator, walked backwards, wrote backwards everywhere. Put That's right. Goofball. All right. Nathan? Yeah. What's up? A uh, question for Lori. Here in she that is. That Playboy was put, uh, courting you. I was wondering what they did to kind of convince you what was finally uh, tip the scales. Oh, gosh. Um... You know, in the very beginning, I they I met with them and they called me in a few times to do some non nudes for Playboy for some of the articles, and um, I got really comfortable with everybody in there and with my stylist and my makeup artist and the photographer. And by the time it, they kind of brought it up again, I was having so much fun in the studio, just hanging out with everybody. I was kind of like, okay, we'll try this one out. But um, in the beginning, it was really nerve wracking and kind of freaky, and I was crying for my robe every five minutes to oh, cover yeah. myself back up but um i just i got comfortable how long does uh, how long does the shoot last oh gosh it depends you know shooting your centerfold lasts at least a week oh really just for the one picture and then after that they do maybe a week or two of shooting for everything else it takes a, it takes it takes a, a while takes a week just to uh just to get the centerfold picture well they sh they don't shoot it on a regular camera they shoot it on one a much bigger one where the you know, the, the Polaroid, the film is... The big? Size. Yeah, big. Three feet yeah. high? Three feet well, why, high. Why does it take so long, though? Because getting focus on those cameras mm. is mm, much more difficult, and they just want it to be perfect. you gotta so. do you got to do what I do with the uh, photographers, Drew. What's my policy? Yell at them. Yeah, but I tell them this. Take, yeah. If you can't take a good goddamn picture, I give, you, I give you five shots. If you can't get a good one, you're no good. You're not a photographer. Yeah, any... any a, a, re a retarded chimp could shoot 70 rolls of film and get a decent shot. You know, they shoot so much film, and it's just, like, amazing how much film they shoot. And then they use, like... like they I use nothing. I reshot a lot of things a lot of times, and they end up using the stuff in the beginning. And I was like, so what were those extra the, the, four weeks the, for? This whole business is nothing but that. <gasps> and we should just yell at people, look. Really, really, really and truly. <laughs> five true, pictures. The best pictures it. of you, how long do they ever take? Five minutes. Yeah. Less. Yeah. Your best pictures are always just yeah. candid shots your buddies took at some party or something. Yeah. Look, you're not a photographer if you got to go through 80 rolls of film, are you? <laughs> couldn't, aren't we all photographers? I couldn't get a good shot of somebody. I got, I make, uh, I get a good shot of Rosie O'Donnell, you give me 80 rolls of film. <laughs> no, you're a good photographer. They give you five shots. That's all you get. Make the, get a good, make one of them worth printing. I'll try that next time. I, try just, I just remember the first experience. You, I, I didn't know anything about this stuff until we did that TV show and you and I had to do that huge shoot that one day. Remember yeah. That? And you, we started screaming at everybody. Well, because they wanted me to hold a giant phone up and stuff and do all this retarded stuff. It, uh, History was not kind, as you predicted, yeah. to, that, to that day. Yeah, that was horrible. But no, I think the last time we did shoots, we just told him that he got, he got five minutes. Yeah. It works fine. They do. They they feel pressured and they do it. Stephanie. Yeah. Which one? Watch, yeah. watch, Lori. Get naked right now. Watch <laughs> this. Five minutes, Drew. Five minutes in my mind. I will take a, a Pulitzer winning <laughs> winning uh, shot yeah. of a uh, naked Lori in my mind's eye. In my mind's eye. And you'll have to trust me. Watch. Click, click, go click, ahead. Click, go click, ahead. Click. Try. Try. Okay. Make it ten minutes. Make it ten minutes. But go ahead. Ready. Start the clock, Drew. <laughs> Start counting. No, one Mississippi. <laughs> two Mississippi. No, no, no. Excuse me. One uh, Mississippi, Mississippi. Two 
Mississippi. No. One Mississippi. One, one Mississippi. Two, two Mississippi. Mississippi. All right, ten. Now do that. Ten Three minutes. Three Mississippi, 600 times. Eh? Lori, disrobe. Ready? Go. <laughs> Here we go. Is this like a race? Yeah. What are you at? You'd be at like three and a half Mississippi You're Five now. Mississippi. Yeah. Oh, five. All right. Stephanie? Yes. You're 21? Yes. How many Mississippis is that true? 12 Mississippi. No, I mean if you're 21. Oh. Got to be hundreds. What's up, Stephanie? Um, well, my sex drive has gone down uh, like a lot, and I'm wondering if there's anything I can do to... Are you on medication? No. I take uh, birth control. Well, that can change it. What are you taking? I'm taking Trinorno. And has it gone down since you started the pill? No, I've been taking the pill for years. Okay. And you didn't switch to that brand recently? No. You All think right. it's the guy? No, I'm very attracted to him. Have you been depressed? Uh, no, I have anxiety. Well, that mm -hmm. can be a manifestation of depression. You sound depressed, i got to tell you. <laughs> well, I'm trying to be quiet. I'm at work. Yeah, well... Where do you work? Um... <laughs> In Phoenix. <laughs> anytime you're what, what? Anytime you're calling, you're, anytime you're work at uh, midnight's a bad sign. Well, it's I'm kind of behind on my work and She's staying I have late. to balance for payroll tomorrow. So. All right. Ooh. Yeah. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that sucks. But, but Stephanie, um, certainly your moods, your work, are going to change this, right? And you're having a lot of anxiety lately. Um, no, actually, it's gotten better lately, is the thing. I've had anxiety for quite a while, and it's gotten worse the past, like, few years, but it seems to be getting better since I've been with this guy. He helps me What's deal with issues, it seems. Like what kind of issues? Um, well, I don't know. I just I don't know why I have anxiety. Well, actually, my um, I watched my best friend die of cancer because I was his care caretaker, and then my mm -hmm. uncle died. Mm -hmm. Of cancer also. Boy, it's, 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 cancer two, night. it's two for cancer yeah. night. <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. Two well, for cancer. Blah, blah, blah. And September coming up. Blah, maybe blah. we can start with Stephanie tomorrow night. We're yeah. out of time. And we don't have time. I, it, it, you have to figure this out a little more, Stephanie. I, certainly it warrants a medical evaluation just to make sure that's something causing all this. I, I still might change the birth control pill okay. just, to, just to see if it makes a difference. And then I'll talk to her some more tomorrow night if we can. Yeah, go talk to her during the commercial. Right. Come on, Drew. Right, well, right, sure, sure. Okay, right, we'll do. Give me, yeah. me and Lori some time to go. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was listening to the radio uh, yesterday, and this song came on, and I thought, show's over. Go home. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> like noon, and I started leaving wherever I was. I'm like, I got to go I'm going home. to sleep. Must go home. Must, must, must drink wine. Must beat off. <laughs> must drunk, must drunk. watch TV. <laughs> yeah. It's a great. I, I was at home, ironically, so I drove to the studio, ironically. <laughs> No, I just uh, had a Pavlovian response. All right, Lori Federer, I want to thank you uh, for coming in. Out thank on uh, newsstands as we speak. Lori yeah. has mixed feelings about it, but go out <laughs> and get it anyway. Go get it. And, you know, it's an interesting strategy because, you know, most of the chicks are in here like they're excited about it, so you don't want to get it because they're excited about it. But Lori's saying, I'm not that excited about it. Now you got to look at it. See yeah. what I'm saying? Reverse psychology. Smooth move. Go get that. Check out my website, oh. lorifetter.com, and just oh, here comes. go yeah. get it. Go get it. All right. We will uh, have the Donnas in here tomorrow night. Until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Dingle. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.